Hello, everybody. I would like to share with you today the idea of brain dance, which I find uh, very useful in my dance practice, uh, also as a teacher, and uh, during my daily life. So I hope you will find it interesting and maybe you would like to research a little bit more. So at some point of my life as a progressive dancer, I realized that um, I'm drawing my attention completely to my feet. And actually I'm dancing not only with my feet, but with my whole body. And I felt that it's a little bit stiff, a little bit disbalanced and something is not working there. So I decided to search for some methods, some dance routines, uh, some practice uh, to develop it more, to help me to connect myself to my body. And I came across um, the idea of brain dance. What is it? So it was invented by Anne Green Gilbert, a pedagogue from Seattle in 2000. And she was searching for uh, a way to um, connect body and mind a little bit more. And she wanted to create a movement routine for her children at school to help them learn faster and to focus and um, actually to be more healthy human beings. And she was inspired by uh, work of uh, some somatic researchers at that time, for example, Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen and especially uh, Irmgard Bartenev. Bartenev was a German dancer and physiotherapist, and she was working on movement fundamentals. And these movement fundamentals were based on some developmental movement patterns that we are um, going through. Uh, in the first year of our life. So on the base of this research, she created the idea of brain dance, which is uh, not a set choreography, but a list of eight patterns, which you can explore by yourself and just put there the movements you like, uh, the movements from particular dance technique, or just super simple movements that anybody can do. There are many possibilities of using brain dance. You can treat it as a dance warm up. You can use it good for important events such as exams or presentations when you feel that you need focus and centering. Or you can treat it just like a vital break from your work, especially the sitting one. And what are the benefits of brain dance? Well, I think the best idea is to check out by yourself. Just practice and see if it brings something good for you, for your body, for your brain, for the connection between brain and body. And if you want to dig deeper, I'm giving some resources here, websites and books. So read a bit, but practice more. Let's start exploring the patterns of brain dance. Breath, it is the first movement we do when coming to this world. And it is one of the best method of self-regulation. Just become aware of it for a while. Feel the nourishment coming to you with the oxygen when you breathe in and the relief of getting rid of what is no longer needed when you breathe out. Just come back to yourself, let the stress go away and calm down. While exploring this pattern you can do very simple breath or explore different possibilities of breathing. Tactile stimulation means touching, and it is the primal communication method, the very first we understand. Touch is one of the basic human needs that can be source of support and safety. Let's think, by the way, how often we touch ourselves. Are we aware of the temperature of our skin, shape of our body parts, 
tonus of our muscles by experimenting with different tactile stimulation we can get to know our body better we become aware of its borders and find simple ways of energizing it or calming it down depending on what it needs let's imagine an infant that curls into the position as in womb going back to its own world and then reaches into space in order to connect with the environment communicating its needs that's the core distal pattern we have six extremities two arms two legs head and tail all are connected to our torso while exploring this pattern you can imagine yourself as the sun sending its rays outside through all extremities and then taking them back to the center. Now we want to explore the connection between our head and tailbone. Visualize your spinal line as it begins with your tailbone, rises up to the basement of your skull and goes up through the skull coming out on the top of your head. The spine is a stable support to our body. Notice, however, how flexible and movable it can be. Experiment with the possibilities of moving this line and try to feel the connection between head and tail anytime. While experimenting with this pattern, you can roll down and up vertebrae by vertebrae, move your head from side to side, move your pelvis to the sides or front and back, and just play around with your spine. And now we want to cut ourselves horizontally and organize our body into two parts, upper and lower. We want to explore how the upper body acts together and how the lower body does it. In baby's development this pattern becomes visible when a baby starts pushing with the arms, hands, knees and feet while still lying on the floor. Support of the ground is crucial here. The childhood is full of this pattern and it can be very energetic and playful with lots of jumps, pushes, claps and so on. It is connected with setting our boundaries, reaching for goals, failing, trying again and achieving them. Let's cut ourselves now vertically along the middle line into right and left half. We want to stabilize one side of the body so that the other can become more mobile. This pattern is visible when child starts crawling and it does it ideally first like a lizard, moving one side of the body together and then the other. This is the very first step to learn how to walk. Good connection between two halves brings you balance between stability and mobility. It also supports more skillful weight shifting.
Now visualize the diagonal lines going through the center of our bodies and connecting right fingertips with left toes and vice versa. This connection represents cross lateral pattern, which is the most complex in the developmental sequence. The baby learns how to cross the middle line of its body. This enables creeping and then walking and running. We can do this movement just contralateral when we are focusing only on crossing the middle line, but we can also try to go deeper and really feel the diagonal connections. Cross lateral pattern is a part of many dance steps, like for example basic Charleston. And we use it nearly unconsciously while walking or running. Vestibular pattern is connected to our inner ear and provides sensory information about motion, equilibrium and spatial orientation. Vestibular system starts to develop already in mother's womb, stimulated by her movements. Actively practicing it, we become more aware of space we are in, more sensitive towards all kinds of sensory information and our balance and coordination improves. We can practice it in many ways, for example, walking or turning slowly with our eyes closed, swinging with our head or the whole upper part, turning around fast like dervish, rolling on the floor, and I'm sure you can invent even more. That's the main idea of brain dance. Remember that the movements I've shown in this video are just a few propositions and there are far more possibilities to discover. You don't have to stand for example, you can do it lying on the floor or sitting. One thing to remember is that these movements reflect the developmental movement pattern of human beings. So it's very beneficial to cycle through them at this particular order. Also, really focusing on connections in your body will bring more results than only vacant repeating of exercises. Have fun with it, take your time and remember that changes come step by step.